In a world filled with hopelessness and despair, Christmas can be a time when sadness and loneliness invade our spirits. Instead, let us change our focus to greater things, more hopeful things, the things that Christ brought when he entered this world. Isaiah says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, the light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of this government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This light dawned in a dark world much like ours today. That light was a living light. A child was born for us, God's gift to a hopeless world, the hope of all mankind. What greater gift could we have been given than one who can change our focus and change our lives? We light the first candle to represent the hope that Jesus brought to us and to this world. It's good to be here today. Thank you for joining us for worship. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 9. Becky has already read this passage. But uh, I want to share just a bit of it with you. Hopefully, as we begin our Advent season, the Lord will speak to your heart and you will really get a true idea of what Christmas is all about. Isaiah chapter 9, did I say 6? Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says this, "For uh, For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. I'm starting an Advent series called He Will Be Called, and we'll be studying the names of Jesus in this passage in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Have you ever been accused of having a fixation on something? Uh, Have you ever had something in your mind that you just can't shake. No matter what you try, you can't get rid of it. It's just on your mind. You're always thinking about it. You're rolling things through your mind and you just can't get, can't leave it down, uh, lay it down. I get that way when I'm working on a project. I I love to do woodworking and uh, lots of times I'll get started on something and I'll work through lunch or work through supper or work late late into the night. I just can't seem to to stop. I, I have to make myself stop, or Becky has to make me stop sometimes. I get fixated on it. Well, maybe some of you have had a fixation on a particular person. Now, when you were a teenager, did you ever have a crush on some celebrity? Or are you teenagers now? Do you have a crush on some celebrity? Uh, you, you thought about them all the time. You knew there was no way in the world you're ever going to meet this person, but you just had them on your mind. You always uh, thought about them. You, you even dreamed about them and just knew that that, that, that actor was going to be the guy that asked you to marry him or whatever it may have been. Uh, that doesn't happen to most of us. But sometimes you can't think about anything else. Becky occasionally gets a fixation on a certain food. Now, I, I do too, but she's worse than me, so I'll pick on her today. Uh, if she wants, starts craving tacos, I'm telling you, nothing will fix it but tacos, okay? And uh, no matter, you know, what else we have what to eat, no, no matter what we try, uh, she's not happy until we have made our trip to El Tap or even to Taco Bell to get a taco. She, she just uh, gets fixated on things like that. Do you realize that God has a fixation as well? Do you realize that God is obsessed with blessing you and me? Do you realize that? He, he thinks about us all the time. We are constantly on His mind and He wants to continuously bless us. And the way He does that is through a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ, that child that was to be be, uh, born, that that son that was to be given. And he's given the descriptive name here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The first one is Wonderful Counselor. Now, there are many aspects that are interesting about the title of Wonderful Counselor, including the fact that 
This name was given to Jesus by Isaiah 750 years before Jesus was ever born. Think about that. Here the prophet Isaiah is looking forward through future history and giving us a uniquely prophetic perspective about the nature of Christ and the role that He can play in our lives. Now, I said the role that He can play, not will play, because that His role in our lives is not automatic. Do you realize that? We must allow Him to be the wonderful counselor in our lives. That won't happen until we recognize our need for Him and we reach out to Him for help. He's here, He's within arm's reach, He's available, but He will not force Himself on you. Now, there are counselors out there who can help you with your, I'm throwing things out, anger issues, or you're dealing with your teenagers, or, or marriage problems, or your feelings with depression, a- any of those kinds of things, there are good counselors out there who can help with those things, but they're not going to come knocking on your door saying, here, I think I can help you. No, they're not going to do that at all. You have to make the first step. You have to recognize your need, and you have to make an appointment with that person in order to get their help. Everybody understand that? So why do we need a counselor? Many people live under a lot of pressure today. Many live under a lot of pressure. And if we're not careful, that pressure can bind us. Our schedules can grow so full... And our hearts can grow so empty at the same time. We can work hard at making a living, but be blind to the fact that we really don't know how to make life work. And we need help. We can organize and sanitize and prioritize and all of those things, but life can still be uncivilized to us. It can still be difficult. And because of our flawed human nature, we need a counselor desperately. For at least two reasons, let me share them with you. First is that our minds are limited. Psalm 16, verses 7 and 8 say this, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. What I'm about to say may be offensive to some, and it may offend our pride, but it is true nonetheless. Our minds are limited, and we often fail to recognize those limitations. We're we're limited. Our minds are limited. So we need a counselor who will counsel us even at night, it says. That, may, that represents the dark times, those, those times of despair and confusion in our lives. We need a counselor who will be at our right hand, suggesting our strength. In, in fact, in this passage, it suggests our lack of strength. He will be at our right hand because our right hand is often weak. We need a counselor who will not be, allow us to be shaken. That word shaken actually means or literally means to slip into worry or to slip into fear. We need a counselor who can keep us from doing that. That's the kind of counselor that Jesus can be. Maybe that's why David said, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. Or the ESV says, I have set the Lord always before me. I keep him right in front of me so he's always in my eyes, always in my face, always in my mind. David was declaring that no matter what lay ahead, whether good or bad, whether joyful or painful, the Lord is going to be his guard, his sentry, his security, guarding and guiding and paving the way because God continuously wants to bless He continuously wants to bless. Aren't you glad we have a God who relishes that role in our lives? Amen? Aren't you glad? We also need a counselor. The second reason is because our emotions are uncertain. 
Our emotions are uncertain. Psalm 73, verses 21 through 26. A bit of a lengthy passage, but let me share it. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. You, some of you are saying, Kurt, that's your life verse, right? Uh, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you, and you hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? The earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. What an amazing passage. In this passage, we see our weaknesses, and they're spelled out pretty clearly. We are bitter, we are grieved by all that we have seen because we've viewed it with these human fleshly eyes. God sees things from a different perspective. He sees with spiritual eyes. Our weaknesses, we are senseless and ignorant. It, it described, the description here is like an animal that has not been trained it doesn't know how to work properly because it hasn't been trained. Our weaknesses were troubled by the potential of failing health and faltering hearts and faltering spirits. But also in this very same passage, we see His strength. We see His power. He holds us by our hand presently. And He will remain our strength in the future. That is our God. He will guide us daily with His counsel. And ultimately, He will lead us to glory in heaven. Amen? Amen. Looking forward to that. Only Jesus, the wonderful counselor, has the ability to transform hearts like that. Only He can do that. We may not like to admit our dependence on Him, but life would be a lot sweeter and a whole lot more peaceful if we would just admit, I need that counselor. Why do we try to figure it out on our own? Why do, why do, we, try, why do we try other, other methods of coping? Some stop by the local bar for happy hour in the evening. That always struck me as kind of ironic seems like no one there is very happy. And if they frequent it very often, they will need recovery. It doesn't seem like a happy place to me. Others immerse themselves in, in career moves and, and, uh, and, and uh, climbing the corporate ladder. And they, they seek counsel. Others seek counsel from their horoscope to tell them how to live and act that day. Can you imagine that? They live often vicariously through... Romance novels or soap operas or Hallmark movies for crying out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Have you seen the one? <laughs> the tragedy is that all of those resources are of human origin. And they, cannot, they are not greater than man's imagination. And when we turn to sources like these, listen, our questions will never be answered our 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 hopes will never be realized if we're seeking to have them fulfilled in those kinds of things i believe it was origin who first said that each of us has a god-shaped vacuum within us a god-shaped hole in our heart and if he's right and if we don't deal with that vacuum issue first then no matter what method of coping with life we try, we'll still be left with a gnawing emptiness in our hearts. An emptiness. We need a wise, wonderful counselor. Well, what makes Jesus qualified to do that? What, what, why is He the one? If I was in the market for a counselor, I would uh, like to know a little bit about his or her credentials about where they went to school about their training about their expertise before i place my trust and before i place my money and before i place my confidence in a counselor i'd like to do a little bit of a background check on them uh, find out a little bit about them right get with me are you okay 
Well, the first qualifier is this for Jesus. For to us, a child is born. He, here is a glorious Christmas truth. Now think about this. A truth that reveals the counseling style of our God, and it's this. We didn't come to God, He came to us. Amen? Think about what that means. When when you think of God, how do you envision Him? Do you see Him as, as one who is approachable? Many think not. Many think, oh, God is, uh, God is so far away and, and, and uh, He doesn't care about me. He wants uh, nothing to do with me. It's been my experience, though, that the people who consider God to be unapproachable are people who have never tried to approach Him. Many have heard so many hellfire and brimstone sermons that they, are, uh, they think they're already cooked. You know, they think there's no hope. I think God knew that we would misinterpret his message of grace. And so to make sure we grabbed it, to make sure we caught it, he came down himself and hand delivered it. In other words, he made the first move toward us. Realizing the distance between him and us. He made the first move, realizing our hesitation in approaching a mighty God of majesty. God came to us as a little child. Wasn't it sweet seeing Macy hold the baby and kissing the baby? Did you notice that? God came to us as a child. Nobody is intimidated by a newborn baby, right? And that's the point. When we come to the child of Bethlehem, when we stoop and gaze into the manger that is filled with hay, we find ourselves staring into the very eyes of God. For to us, a child is born. The second qualifier is this. To us, a son is given. I believe this is the heart of Isaiah's message. That God has made us, the very God who made us, the very God who knows us, the God who controls the universe and it's all under His authority, gave Himself away to us and for us. Aren't you glad the Bible doesn't say, to us a son is earned by those who are morally deserving? Aren't you glad the Bible doesn't say to us a son is loaned until we can figure out life on our own? Thank the Lord that a son is given. Aren't you glad that long before you reached a crisis, long before you knew you needed him, God gave himself to you? In John chapter 1 verse 12 it says, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right or authority or the power or the ability to become children of God. Listen, there is no way in the world that we would ever deserve that gift. No way in the world. There's no way we could pay for that gift. There's no way we could ever live well enough to be worthy of the gift Of the title of child of God. There is no way. Yet in spite of our inadequacy. That's an easy word to say. In spite of our inadequacy. God gave himself to us. So what keeps us from seeking counsel? Maybe a few things. First of all fear and pride. Those things often keep us from admitting that we need help. Also, a lack of information. Some of us just don't know a reputable counselor to, to, to go seek out. Also, a lack of resources. Some can't afford the counseling sessions. And sometimes it's time. Sometimes we can't get an appointment for months. But Christ, our wonderful counselor, is the solution for all of these Listen, are are you afraid? 
Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says that he is gentle and humble in heart. There's no need to fear. Do you lack information? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 says, The Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And he offers that to us. Are you short on resources? I love this passage. Isaiah 55, 1. Come to me, all who are thirsty. Come to the waters. And you who have no money, come and buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without cost. He says, I've paid for it. It's taken care of. It's provided. It's yours. Free for the asking. Do you need an appointment? Psalm 46, 1 says, He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Listen, there's no appointment necessary. In an instant... You can call on him, and he is available to you. In fact, at any instant, you can call on him. And oh yes, there's one more thing. Any good counselor with any kind of training knows that you're not supposed to get emotionally involved with your clients. Well, in that sense, you might say that Jesus was a miserable failure. Because Jesus openly declares his love. For us, he risks being rejected and ignored, and he willingly opens his heart to anyone, to anyone and everyone who wants him. And he accepts anyone, whatever they may be, wherever they may be, whoever they may be, whatever they may have done, his arms are wide open, and he accepts and he invites you. There is no counselor so personal, so accessible, so capable, and so wonderful. Does anyone here besides me need some counseling? Let me suggest that you let Jesus be your wonderful counselor today. Let's bow for prayer.